This item cost me about $1 and I use it nearly every time I go to the climbing gym. Not this exact one, this one's still in the package. I have one out of the package. Anyway, I'll show you what it is in just a moment, but first, why should you care about $1 climbing gear? I'd say, good question, but that would only be to humor you because why you should care is obvious. Indoor rock climbing is expensive, but creativity is cheap. And that idea is what drove me to check out a few stores that aren't known for climbing gear to see what kind of climbing gear and climbing adjacent gear I could find. Now I'm looking for both cheap alternatives to common climbing essentials and items that aren't traditionally thought of as climbing gear, but items that I actually use quite often. And the first such item is this laser pointer. A laser pointer has become absolutely essential to me when I'm climbing with friends. If you've ever climbed with friends, you know the drill. You're projecting a problem together and you spend most of your time pointing at the wall, trying to describe which of the many holds you're actually pointing at so that your friend can understand exactly why it's not possible to left Gaston on that vertical edge with the foot chip placed where it is, Sean. A laser pointer solves all of this confusion. And I got this beauty at the local Dollar Tree for $1 and 25 cents. Yeah, everything at the Dollar Tree is $1.25 now. I haven't been there in a while, I didn't know. Let's see what other climbing gear I found at the Dollar Tree and a couple of other stores. We will start today's journey at Dollar Tree. Oh, I haven't been to the Dollar Tree in a while. And right away I find a great piece of kit, fingernail clippers. These are great to have in your climbing gear bag. Uh, not only are they great for cutting athletic tape, but they're also really great for getting rid of flappers. Uh, sometimes you get a flapper and you wanna keep climbing. I got this flapper here recently. You can see it's already trimmed. But this is what I'm gonna do for you because I love all of you. I'm gonna give you a quick four-step process for uh, getting rid of flappers so that you can keep climbing. Are you ready? Pay attention. Step one, use fingernail clippers to just cut off the flap. Some people say don't cut off the flap. I say cut off the flap. Then wash your hands, get all the chalk off. Then dry your hands, get all the water off. And then just wrap the crap out of your hand. That's all. Do that, that'll last a good 20 minutes or so. It's nice. Uh, speaking of athletic tape, here's some right here, which I was actually very surprised to find. I was not expecting to find athletic tape at Dollar Tree because uh, the athletic tape that I buy um, is like $5 a roll. And I compare the quality after the filming this video to the black diamond tape that I usually buy. And it's pretty comparable. Like it feels pretty much exactly the same. So I will definitely be buying athletic tape from Dollar Tree moving forward. This is a win. Here are hand warmers. You might not think of these as being climbing gear, but uh, if you go to a gym like one of the gyms I go to, which is essentially in a warehouse, uh, in the middle of the winter, your fingers can get very cold. So between climbs as you're resting, being able to keep your fingers warm is actually very helpful and only a dollar 25. Next up, wire brushes. These are not a great replacement to actual hold brushes. Uh, that's what I thought maybe they would be when I first grabbed them, but then I realized wire brushes would damage the hell out of your climbing holds. So don't replace your wild boar hair brushes or boar hair brushes. I don't know if I had to say wild before that, just boar hair brushes uh, with these. Don't do that. Your climbing gym will hate you and climbers will hate you. Put them back. Shop towels. Shop towels, they are absorbent, uh, super absorbent as that label says, uh, and reusable. These are great for just wiping sweat off of your face. I know you could use your sleeve or you could use torn up pieces of old shirt, but uh, for only $1.25, these are very, uh, very handy. So I grab them and I use them now. Next up, shoe liners. I've had an idea for a while to maybe take one of these and repurpose these to make a chalk ball. Uh, so I think I'm gonna try that out right now. And here it is. I climbed with it all day and uh, it worked really, really, really well. Uh, I would say there's two major downfalls though. One, you kind of actually saw right there. Uh, it's a little bit too porous. Uh, the chalk actually permeates through the sock a little bit too much, uh, which is, not what I was expecting. Um, and I realized by saying that I'm being very, very, very picky. Uh, but hey, it was too much chalk. Whereas the commercial 
uh, ball was too little chalk. I'll find a happy medium at some point. The other downside is that uh, I tied a knot in the top of it to seal it, and that makes this basically a one use only. Like you can't really refill it unless you untie the knot and retie it, but that's kind of hard to do, especially with this type of material. You could probably find a different way to clip the top so that it is reusable. Um, but ultimately what I decided was this is probably not a great alternative to a chalk ball. Chalk balls run between five and $10, and generally they come with chalk already filled in. Uh, that makes them not really that much more expensive than this, and the fact that those are built to be reusable makes them, I think, uh, much better to use. The convenience factor alone is definitely worth going for a commercial chalk ball rather than trying to make your own. So send it or bin it. I'm gonna say bin this one. Up next, Walmart. The only store with the courage to have a logo that looks like a Kurt Vonnegut asshole. First item, a shower caddy. Ah, yeah, you're probably thinking why? Why, Caleb, why is a shower caddy a piece of climbing equipment? Um, it is, and maybe I'll make a, don't grab a broken one though, put that one back. Uh, it is a great piece of climbing kit and I will maybe sometime make a full video dedicated to my shower caddy climbing gear holder. Uh, I love it. I love it so much that recently when uh, my climbing gear got stolen, I purchased another one of these to replace the one that got stolen because it's a genuinely great piece of kit. More to come on that though, maybe in a future video. Let me know if you'd like to see a dedicated video about my shower caddy climbing gear holder. Up next, uh, this two quart plastic container uh, with a screw top lid, a flip top lid. I use these to keep all of my climbing chalk in. I have several different types of climbing chalk, um, but I do admit that it's a bit of an overkill process. Like you can just, just keep your chalk in your chalk bag. Uh, so I would say this one is, um, you know, a good buy if you're a weirdo like me who just loves organization. Over in the jarring section, a canning funnel. What's this used for, you might ask? This is part of the tool set that I use for filling my chalk balls. Uh, I actually have a dedicated shorts video about that, uh, which I will post right here. Ding. Uh, yeah, just watch that if you want to see the whole video about filling chalk balls. Up next at Walmart, carabiners. Of course, carabiners. I mean, you can buy carabiners anywhere. Do note though, these are not climbing carabiners. Even though it's climbing gear, these should not be used for climbing. Uh, you wanna buy special carabiners that are specifically for climbing. That's not what these are. These are more decorative or for utility purposes like key rings and stuff like that. I use these to clip my shoes or my chalk bag to things uh, to actually the aforementioned shower caddy is what I use to clip. Uh, yeah, I clip these to that. Lowe's, Lowe's, not known for their low prices despite the name, but known for their uh, ability to make me think creatively about things. Uh, case in point number one, these PVC joints uh, are couplings, I guess they're called. I saw these and I immediately thought of what I think might be kind of a cool idea, something to make with these. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And uh, at the end of this video, I will show you if it worked out or not. More carabiners, of course, and more warnings. Don't use these for climbing, all right? But uh, here's, a, here's one with lots of different sizes. That's fun, it's fun. None of these are especially cheap. You can find carabiners, especially utility carabiners like these uh, anywhere. Next, a sanding block. Caleb, what's that for? Uh, it's for sanding calluses. So uh, when you climb a lot, you get calluses on your palms and you wanna treat those calluses because if you don't, those calluses can get caught on holds and get ripped open and create flappers. If you don't know what a flapper is, uh, rewind this video a bit. As I was fiddling with that sanding block, it reminded me that at home I have a thing called a sandbar tool, which is essentially just a cylindrical piece of sandpaper. Um, and I thought, I wonder if there's something at Lowe's that would replicate that and make it cheaper because the sandbar tool is $40, which is way too expensive. So I saw these and while these aren't going to suit my needs, they're not long enough, they did give me a bit of an idea. Let's do that with some super glue and sandpaper. I got 80 grit sandpaper.
And here's the result. I used 80 grit sandpaper, PVC pipe. Uh, I kept it hollow for some reason. I could have probably used a wooden dowel rod and it would have been just fine, maybe even a little bit cheaper. But I actually used this today after climbing to get rid of some of my calluses and it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty comparable to this. The only real difference I would say is that the sand particles on the sandbar, they're a little bit sharper. So uh, they tend to grab the skin a little bit more, but this worked really, really, really well. Um, the only other downside is that because this has a seam where the glue, where the uh, sandpaper overlaps, there is a potential that you might be not thinking and you might try to sand your fingers and actually have that lip curl into your fingers, which could cause it to, you know, start fraying or coming apart or whatever. But I think as long as you're paying attention to that and you're actually sanding it one way so that it's not doing that, this is, I think, a definite substitute for the sandbar tool. This, about $40, this, I would guess, if I already had the sandpaper lying around and didn't spend, you know, $8 on a whole package of sandpaper, um, probably could get this for less than like $5 altogether. So uh, the homemade sandbar tool, bin it or send it, send it. Next up on the weird idea train, those couplings that I bought earlier, those are gonna pair with some rope or string or twine or thread uh, or any other synonym that just means skinny piece of stringed cotton to hold things together. I picked this stuff, no reason, just thought it looked uh, pick upable. So I'm gonna use this and we're gonna use this to make a finger, a mono finger strengthener thing. That's the sound I'm making as I pull my fingers on this and strengthen it. You can see it wrapped around my foot up front with some string and then two couplings. Uh, I don't know, I think it actually turned out okay. Uh, it's a little cumbersome, I'll be honest. Uh, but as I'm sitting there watching Fallout 4 Let's Plays, uh, which you can do as well if you'd like, uh, it's actually kind of nice. Uh, I don't regret it at all. Uh, and you should not regret watching more of my content. Watch more of these videos. There's some on the screen right now. Click one.